sins. Because any infliction or any, uh, anything that befalls by way of a calamity or tribulation upon a Muslim, the first thing that the Muslim does is return it back to himself. That he returns back to himself. And the Muslim is, is introspective. That he looks towards him, what have I done to deserve this? Maybe there was something by way of the sunnah that I left. Maybe there is something by way of obedience to Allah that I've left. Look at this hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, which really puts the whole thing into context for you. The hadith of Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu, that he said that the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasallam stated, he said, إِذَا تَبَايَعْتُمْ بِالْعِينَ وَأَخَذْتُمْ أَذْنَابِ الْبَقَرِ وَرَدِيتُمْ بِالزَّرْعَ وَتَرَكْتُمُ الْجِهَادِ صَلَّتَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكُمْ ذُلَّةً لا ينزعه حتى ترجعوا إلى دينكم. That the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said that when you start taking part in interest-based transactions, and this ina, it is one of the mildest and the most subtle forms of interest that there is. So whoever takes part in in interest transactions, whether they be the most subtle form or whether they be the most obvious form. That when you start taking part in interest-based transactions, usury, uh, and you hold on to the, kale, to the tails of the cattle, and you become satisfied with the cultivation of the dunya, then, and you abandon jihad in the path of Allah, then the humiliation of Allah will come down upon you. Look at this sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the sunnah of Allah. Without a shadow of a doubt, you do certain things, certain results will occur. A maxim or a principle in Islam, al jazam in jinsil amal, that the recompense is accordance to your deeds. If your deeds are good, your recompense is good. If your deeds are bad, then the recompense is bad. The recompense is going to be likewise. al jazam in jinsil amal, a universal principle. Do good and you will receive good. Do evil and you'll be recompensed and punished for the evil that you do. So here we find the hadith. إِذَا تَبَايَعْتُمْ بِالْإِينَ If you hold on or if you partake in interest-based transactions. If you hold on to the tales of cattle. If you become satisfied with the cultivation of the dunya, of the earth. Satisfied with this type of cultivation. And you abandon jihad. And jihad is a vast topic and a vast word. And hopefully over the next two days, in some of the lectures that we are delivering, we're going to cover the issue of jihad and its true meaning. But you abandon jihad in the path of Allah. Sallat Allahu alaykum dhullah. Allah's humiliation will come upon you. Whose humiliation, ya ikhwan? Pay attention. Humiliation from the Zionists, the humiliation of America, humiliation, United Nations. Whose humiliation? The humiliation of Allah will come down upon you. Let's not look for exit strategies from why the Muslims are in the state that they're in. The reason why we're in the state that we're in, that we are the result of that which the Muslims are being inflicted with today. And all of these other things that you see, the attack upon the Muslims, the weakening of the Muslims, the Muslims being divided and hating each other, the enemy overpowering and entering the Muslim lands and no one cares. And there is no re and, and, and even to resist is, a, is, is something that is impossible. Why? Is it because of the strength of the enemy? Or is it because of the weakness of the Muslim in Iman? Ya Ikhwan, it is the latter, not the former. It is the weakness of the Iman of the believer that has caused Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that, that results in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sending down upon him his humiliation. And then Allah mentions, or the Prophet sallallahu mentioned, that Allah will not remove his humiliation up until you return back to what? To jihad, to terrorism, to killing yourself, suicide bombings, indiscriminate killing, planting bombs in, substation, in, in, in underground stations, blowing up trains and airplanes. What did the Prophet ﷺ say? Humiliation is removed how? Do we accept the concept that many of the people who propagate the ideology of terrorism in our times, that they say that the humiliation will be removed by way of suicide bombings. Humiliation will be removed by way of airplane hijackings. Humiliation of the Muslims will be removed by way of insurgency and terrorism and taking, as they claim, the terror to the Western lands, to the capitals of the Western nations. 
Ya ikhwan, this is not what the Prophet said. The Prophet said, La yanzi'uhu, that Allah will not remove the humiliation up until you return back to your deen. He didn't say return back to killing. He didn't even say return back to jihad. He didn't say return back to jihad. He said, Hatta tarji'u ila dini, ala, ila dinikum. Up until you return back to your religion, he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So let me ask you, ya ikhwan, what is the deen of al-Islam? What is the deen that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came with? It is the deen that primarily and first and foremost establishes the correct Islamic aqeedah. The correct Islamic belief and creed. This is what we have to return back to. If we wish for all of this humiliation to be relieved or the Muslims to be relieved from that. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. So the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this hadith, which is a short hadith, but we accept the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whether it is a short hadith or whether it is a lengthy hadith. So long as the hadith is authentic and it is attributed authentically to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this hadith without doubt is attributed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with clear authenticity. Not only that, we have various verses from the Qur'an likewise that mention the same thing. Mention the same thing. That, the, that Allah, for example, in one verse of the Qur'an, Allah mentions that never does Allah remove the blessings that He gives to a group of people. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not remove the blessings from, for, uh, that He gives to a group of people except due to something that they themselves have done. So this is the reality also. That the reality of the affair is that if Allah blesses you with something, Allah will not remove that blessing from you. Up until you do something, and you have done something that deserves that, that blessing be removed from you. Look at the blessings in the early part of Islam. In the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the time after the, after the passing away of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, within a hundred years, ya ikhwan, hundred years, a group of desert Arabs that were blessed with Islam and they became the most noble of Allah's creation upon the earth. The companions of Allah's Messenger. Within a hundred years of the passing away of the Messenger of Allah, the Muslims had entered into China. On the other side, they were knocking on the doors of Madrid and Barcelona in, in Spain. They had entered into parts of Europe. They had conquered the whole of North Africa. They had entered into Afghanistan and Khorasan and Persia and Sindh. Muslims had entered in this, into this land. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them blessings? And sometimes they would enter into a land with no opposition. No one opposing them, no 